You, how are you going to check? Hello and uh, happy post Christmas, everyone. Uh, I am Rated M from Annie. On to my right is Kohaku. Uh, we are going to talk Black Cat. So before we begin, Yay. before we begin, I'm going to quick check on the audio because I do not want the problem from last <laughs> podcast. So give me one second. Do 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 And it looks like we're good. Uh, <laughs> for any of you that watch our Kobe Bebop podcast, you obviously know what I'm talking about. The first five minutes were completely muted because settings were changed. So, uh, welcome all. Uh, uh, again, once again, I'm Rated M for Manny, and this is Kohaku. Uh, you know us as the DM and uh, Fake, our changeling, mm -hmm. uh, from our D&D campaign. Otherwise, you know me as Rated M for Manny, who does most of the streams. But uh, before we did DM, when DMing and you know D and D, we were oh well, we are still cosplayers, and one of our favorites is Spider Man and Black Cat. Yes, so we are big fans of Spider Man, uh, and obviously Black Cat. It's actually how we met each other. Uh, for any of you who do not know, we're we're married, uh, and uh, that's actually how we met is through cosplay, mm -hmm. and with uh, the um. The completion of now a couple weeks into uh, No Way Home, Spider-Man, uh, we figured that there was a topic that we needed to bring up due to a specific change that we were pretty excited about with the movie, uh, uh, which is Black Cat. Uh, we never thought that she was going to turn to Disney Universe at all as far as Marvel's concerned. And there's a few changes that we think uh, can have us talk about that. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight is Black Cat and her possibility of either Anthony into the Disney universe as far as the MCU or possibly some Sony other Marvel verse? universe, the Sony verse, I yeah. guess, if you want to call it the Venom verse <laughs> or something like that. Um, spoiler so before, alerts though. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, before we move ahead, we do have a spoiler warning. So make sure that while you're watching, if you have not seen no way home yet, uh, you know, Step away, mute it. Please do not leave, but step away, mute your uh, mic. Give yourself 10 minutes. We are not going to make this about No Way Home. We're just going to kind of do a quick <laughs> synopsis so you understand why we waited till now to talk about this. Uh, before I begin, uh, first off, this is not the first time Amber and I have had this conversation. We've had this conversation <laughs> many of times with many of our nerd oh, friends. Uh, I we've think we've... We've had this conversation so many, obviously, being that Black Cat and Spider-Man are our favorite characters from Marvel, we've had this conversation probably ever since we started dating. So that's like seven years ago. And, and so. honest, yeah, and I mean, honestly, you know, we invited some other people to join us, but it's probably better if it's just uh, us in here because we've had this talk with many of our nerd friends and it turns into like a legitimate debate about <laughs> how this should be done right. It's so still nice, but we're yes. very passionate when it comes to Spider Man and Black Cat. And obviously, Spider Man can be more flexible because obviously, Spider Man's done so many times. But realistically, we've not seen Black Cat on the big screen yet. Um, so, Sad like day. I, yeah. Uh, so, before we begin, like I said, we're going to talk about No Way Home. So, if you've not seen it yet, or if you're not afraid of spoilers, or uh, if you have not seen it yet and you don't want spoilers, uh, please mute yourself, please mute us, and then come back in like five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. So the uh, core concept of No Way Home uh, for anybody who's not seen trailers or anything like that, you know, you uh, uh, a magical spell to e that Doctor Strange cast to erase everybody's memory of the knowledge that Peter Parker's Spider-Man has created so much havoc to himself, his loved ones gets ruined because Peter keeps changing the spell because he wants to make sure that it's that May, that MJ, that Ned actually know. Uh, due to this, it kind of throws the Spider-Verse into dismay, and sort of a Sinister Six ends up. I want to say sort of because I don't believe there's actually six of them. There's actually five. 
and mm-hmm. different villains that that by definition technically in their v- universe know spider-man's secret identity come in uh and eventually it turns out to a turmoil long story short uh, that at the end of it peter has to essentially accept that he made a mistake this spell has to happen everybody has to forget him including the love of his life in the current sense which is mj and at the end you find out that he basically has to what seems like accept the fact that he needs to let her live her own life and it's better for her to be without him as far as what it seems like by context and then it moves on to him being more of a more adult spider-man yes the movie itself is fantastic i I love it i think we both agree that we love the movie yes there's so many things we could have a whole podcast just about that and that's why we're not going to talk too much about it because (laughs) we probably won't stop so it has it has many action scenes it's fantastic movie we love it but again that's not what we're here for so we're mostly talking about the ending we're talking about the fact that this is what it seems like what they're doing is they're allowing peter to kind of have a restart to break out of his training, training right. uh, out of his know, teenage out. age, pretty right. much. And it looks like this is kind of the answer that people have been having the question for for a long time: is, is how is Peter going to grow up if he's constantly being the sidekick to all the Avengers? Mm-hmm. Well, this is a pretty good answer: right. is basically have him deal with the hardest thing he can deal with, which is a loss of Aunt May. And the loss of his love, uh, basically, you know, not losing her, but in all intents and purposes, he can't have her. Uh, and forcing himself to grow up, which puts him in a point where Disney at this, uh, at the same time, Disney at this point, when I say Disney, I mean the, that Disney that runs Marvel. So Kevin Marvel, C- Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, or the we, MCU, yeah. the Marvel Cinematic MCU. Universe. They've yeah. been progressively for the past five years have been getting a little bit allowing more adult topics to be brought up in their movies. Mm-hmm. If this was 10 years ago at the beginning of the MCU, they Even were in tip- their shows. Yeah. They were tiptoeing a lot. The only thing that they allowed to happen because it was the creation of the MCU was Iron Man. But yeah. that was just something that they had to let flow through because they started that way when Iron Man was created before Disney bought it. But they're allowing more, flexible things and the reason why we're mm-hmm. talking about black cat today is because when we got this conversation even as quickly even as within the past three years we both agreed that with the mixture of don't get me wrong we love tom holland and he's mm-hmm. a lot older mm-hmm. than he's supposed to than they make him to be in the mcu the way that they were treating him was always this innocent kid just- that was that just loved heroes yeah, we could leave it as it just wasn't appropriate, probably. Right. It wouldn't be good to introduce a character like Black Cat in his life without making her something she's not supposed to be and then essentially ruining Black Cat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we agree that both really his, sad. Yeah, with both his, with the age that they're making him out to be, the character they're trying to make him out to be, <laughs> and the way Disney was trying to steal, a, a, you know, try to keep things as PG as possible. There was no possible way we could see them throwing a black cat without modifying so many things about her personality. Mm-hmm. But now that they're allowing so many more adult topics to be brought up, including sex, especially in the Disney Plus shows, and uh, allowing Tom Holland's Spider-Man to grow up, this is the perfect time for them to include black cat. Great. And depending on what they do, because Black, and we'll get into this in more detail, but because Black Cat has played so many different kinds of roles in Spider Man comics, you know, her main role has been kind of this lovesick kind of stalker ish slash on a gone, off off a gone, uh, like girlfriend slash friends with benefits person. So that's like, that I just thought, and we both agreed that in the way originally how the Spider the reboot of Spider Man was going, it didn't seem appropriate. But now, once you finish watching this last one, you will see why we feel like it's potentially appropriate that they might bring in a character like that. 
But I think we could, I would say, yeah. are, are we done talking about them now, the movie, so we can say spoiler yeah. end? Yeah, so spoilers okay. over with for anybody who's muted, you're all good. Uh, so, <laughs> to be honest, and, and, and I'm not going to, uh, if you do know a lot about Black Cat, then congratulations to you. But realistically, a lot of people don't actually know a lot about Black Cat, other than mm-hmm. a few things that she's that she's been in. But a lot mm-hmm. of people don't know, let's say, the core aspect of Black Cat. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're going to leave it off to Amber here, since she is the Black Cat expert. So <laughs> take it away. Uh, she is going to explain kind of the history of Black Cat without spending yeah. too long to see what yeah, so I, I would say that's very highly sp- <laughs> like words towards me. I don't know if I'm truly an expert, but I have been a huge fan of Black Cat for a very, very, very long time. I've cosplayed her. I've done, I've read most of the comics regarding her. Obviously, I've had several different versions of cosplay. Like even this is an actual um casual look of black hat um so yeah um but some of the things to note is that yes black hat has evolved a lot like how spider-man has evolved over the years in comics so i'm just gonna do some basic stuff and some of the history and some of the classic portion that and we'll like touch on a few things um, here and there, but I'm not going to go into great detail because if you're really interested, I really recommend to try to uh, read as many comics you can because her storyline is super cool. Starts out kind of weird, but super cool. Um, but she first appeared in 1978. Um, her first appearance was in Amazing Spider-Man. Um, she was originally developed as a villain for Sp- uh, Spider Woman, um, but when um, I think his name is, and if I say this wrong, I'm sorry, Marv uh, Wolfman, when he took over writing, he actually wanted to include her into the Amazing Spider Man. Um, and actually, when you first meet her, she has already had kind of a background and a few things that have already happened when Spider-Man first meets her. And she actually meets Spider-Man the first time she ever puts her suit on. Um, she's from Queens. She's a daughter of Walter Hardy. So her real name is Felicia Hardy. Uh, she actually has a lot of natural abilities. It's not until later on in the comics that she actually gets superpowers. And mostly her superpowers, she goes on quests to try to find them because of the fact that her love of Spider-Man. Now we're talking about Spider-Man, not Peter Parker. Um, that's one thing to get, uh, you'll need to know too, is she, unlike a lot of the other love interests of Spider-Man, Black Cat's not really in love with Peter Parker and Spider-Man. She's in love with Spider-Man first, and she kind of tolerates and grows to love Peter Parker, I would say, um, as years go on. But there's a lot of different instances where really she just is in love with his uh, his actual superhero instead of actually him as a person. But with that being said, she didn't have any superpowers. She had natural abilities. She had been trained. Um, Her father was a cat burglar, so she learned how to do all of the martial arts and everything like that. But she really started doing a lot of her training and really getting into learning um, skills for fighting and defending herself when she actually was sexually assaulted in her freshman year of uh, university and it the really uh, that is one of the key things about black hat that kind of sets the, her apart from a lot of the other love interests because she's not really she's out to do whatever is best for her because she never she uh she actually swore and promised to herself that she would never let something like that happen again and that she would just focus on her and what she needed instead of actually trying to um, focus on others. So it kind of, she's got a really tragic backstory, but um, 
she kind of overcomes it too, which is amazing. And one of the really thing is, is that there's a part where she actually, after her training and she puts on the suit for the first time, um, she really actually wanted to kill the person who assaulted her, but he ended up dying um, by a car accident, I believe, if I remember right. And um, so she was robbed of that. So she really then took on her persona of actually just going around and burgling and doing kind of the same thing as her father used to do. And that's when she truly took on the name of Black Cat because that's what her father's name, his, his cat burglar um, uh, identity was. Later on, once she meets Spider-Man, like I said, she falls in love with Spider-Man, the actual Spider-Man side. She doesn't fall in love with uh, Peter Parker. And she kind of becomes this love-struck kind of stalker for a while, which is kind of weird. But off and on, and she's both a good character and a bad character. She kind of goes back and forth, depending on her thoughts. But she does gain powers. She gains powers... um, First, she was tricked by Kingpin um, to gain powers of something called luck. But the, and this happened around the first Secret Wars. And the luck powers actually were lucky for her, but bad luck for her enemies or anybody who came near her. So, and the reason why she was, this was a trick was not just because. Um, Ping, uh, Kingpin wanted to do this because of stuff that she stole from him and as a vengeance to him, but uh, on her, but also because she he knew that she followed Spider-Man around and was in love with him. So um, he it was the bad luck effect would happen to him too. Um, and actually... Spider-Man helps. He actually gets um, Doctor Strange to help and change her actual powers. And then she gets these new powers that are very much like uh, a cat power. So super strength. And then she has good vision, balance, and claws, detractable claws. But she eventually loses those powers too. And she really plays this good, bad-ish character where one second she's good, one second she's bad. Um, After she loses her powers, she actually creates a suit, um, an actual tech suit herself for all of those powers that she originally had are now in her suit. And eventually, if you've never actually read her comic books, she actually becomes a big crime boss herself of New York. She becomes the crime boss of New York. She replaces Kingpin and she actually owns the bar without a name for a while too in a comic. And she becomes really like badass in that way, in that kind of way. But she also still has a soft spot for Spider-Man. Um, yeah, I would say that would be kind of her in a nutshell. She has got uh, gotten around a lot, as we would say in the the Marvel world, but um, there's a few characters that have done that. But she really, she really just does whatever she pleases and what she thinks is best for her. Um, in both in and out of being Felicia and Black Cat. Oh, and one big thing that a lot of people wonder, because, you know, she has the, like, white, blonde, platinum blonde hair. That's actually something that they put in the comics that she is. That's one of her striking figure uh, features as an actual Felicia Hardy, is that she's always had platinum blonde hair that has been natural. So, um, obviously, you don't see that as a natural thing often. And so, when you see it, it's something that's striking. So... I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. Yeah. So, um, that's all my stuff. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, so there's, there's always a confusion of that black cat story. And it's mostly because a lot of people, and this is just the way the world is now is, is uh, they focus more on the cinematic media than the conch media. Mm-hmm. And her story has been re- retconned many times, but it's always been very careful to be put on this, onto TV just because of the adult nature that comes with her. I wouldn't say her adult nature, but just the story that comes with her. And mm-hmm. um, honestly, the closest thing that if any of you've ever seen it before was the old 90s 
Spider-Man animated. Mm-hmm. She was TV in show. there. It doesn't give her a true origin, but it gives you something similar. It talks about her father, the original Black Cat. Uh, yeah, it kind of gives was, you a general gist of her. Yeah, character. I mean, part of that, uh, part of the '90s, like animated series, a lot of those details were, um, pretty much uh, were some of the details that were of her storyline in the comics. Obviously, they had to make it kiddish. They're not going to talk about sexual her, uh, harassment or assault. They're not going to talk about the her being a like a friend with benefits to a point you know that kind of stuff they're not going to talk about that but they did get some of the other things like she was with flash thompson you know like all of those kind of things um she was you know like they changed it so that she was kind of a school i think a school school uh like uh went to school with him and he and some parts of the some of the comics make it so that she went to school with him, and but a lot of them they don't. So um, it really depends on which comic you're looking at. So yeah. And at this point, at this point, she finally got her own. After so many years, she finally got. I believe in 2018, she finally got her own comic book line, and which is kind of involved. On, yeah, and today we finally got our pops. They after so long, Black Cat finally got a pop, and it's actually off the 90s. Spider-Man animated series. And I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this for years and yeah. years and years. I almost actually looked into getting one made specifically for me because I didn't think they would ever do her as a pop figure. So right. I'm very excited. <laughs> so let's, before we talk about what we think, how it should work in the, in the movies, what are, and I got a couple ideas myself. Uh, what are some of the things that's required for her to work in a movie that would appeal to you and other female, let's just go with cosplayers that cosplay as Black Cat? For all of that group, what required, what, what kind of piece? Because obviously we know that Marvel's never going to get the character 100% correct. Right. Right. They're gonna make they're gonna take liberties to fit him into the story. They're right. going to do certain things that fits into the it, it, because she's gonna have to she's going to have to fit into a story. Right. If yeah. It goes the way we want it to. It's gonna be a Spider-Man story. So, mm-hmm. granted, it could be in a Daredevil thing. We thought of that originally. She could have appeared in, mm. in Netflix, yeah. Daredevil, series, but we didn't really want that because then it would be a Daredevil thing, not a Spider-Man thing. But um, what what are like the top things that you would be upset if they took them away from you when they make a movie? I would really be well. I've gone through this a couple times. My my thought process, and some of it is, I, I think I have a maybe's list, and then a top like a top amount that I would want. It would be pretty upset if they, um didn't follow it first off obviously she needs to be smart she's not dumb right um and she also needs to be trained so she needs to they need to show how much training how much physical training she did because that's one of the main reasons why spider-man and peter parker actually get interested by her is because she beats him without any special powers she beats him in a fight that first time he uh, that she meets him. Yes, she did use her sexuality for a little bit to like, you know, distract him for a second. Like she kissed him. So obviously that distracted him. And that's another thing they would need to keep. They would have to show that sexual side to a point sexuality, that seduction kind of thing. Because um, really, if you think about it, she's kind of like, she's supposed to be kind of the aunt. I mean, even though she was first, she's, it's like if you wanted to find a parallel of what kind of character she is in other comic book universes, it would be Catwoman, obviously. So um, she needs to have that sex appeal and she needs to have that seduction, but she needs to be smart about it. She can't just be like, oh, whatever you want, Spidey. And I think also I'd be really upset if they had her fall in love with Peter Parker, okay. because that goes against everything 
that she really was. So, I mean, yes, later on, she accepts the man with behind the mask. But for really at the beginning, she was only in love with Spider-Man. True. So. Yeah, I, and, and that brings up a good point that you were just mentioning before, uh, that... Um, oh, uh, about uh, her not falling in love with Peter. That's why mm-hmm. this would be a good point because it's probably going to be in his next film or whatever like that. He's probably not actively looking for love. Right. And that's another thing is that um, Black Cat comes into Peter's life or Spider-Man's life when he's when he's trying to get over MJ. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I'm not going to like reference back to the movie because people go fun- go watch it yourself. But um, like, so this would be a perfect timing because that's in the comic books. She comes into his life at a time he's not looking for love where he's actually trying to heal. And so she, she just pops in. Pretty much, she come. She catches him off guard, and that's really what a cat does, anyways. If you think about it, mm-hmm. if you think of a nature of a cat, they they kind of try to keep you on your toes. Well, that's what Black Cat does for Spider Man. Yes, she becomes kind of a love sick to a point stalker. I wouldn't say totally stalker, but a lot of people think that. Um, I don't c- consider her. As a stalker for a much, I think of her as more of she's fascinated by Mm Spider-Man. And that's why she kind of wants to get to know who Spider-Man is. Not as who's behind the mask, but what does he do? What is he doing? Like, how is he doing all these things? Because she's trained all these years and some of the things he does, she can't do. So kind of thing. So, yeah, the... the I guess the main reason why we're bringing this up now is because there is reason for us to think that Black Hat could come out very soon. But there's also there's also a thing of like we don't know how or where she could appear in the movies. Mm-hmm. So the the way I say that is it looks like I'm not gonna say Felicia, but the Black Cat as a name, because there's multiple mm-hmm. people with the title the Black Cat in Marvel. Mm-hmm has fit in but in the second trailer of morbius mm-hmm. uh if you look very closely when they look at a newspaper the daily bugle it says black cat strikes again now right. morbius they, it seems like they made it very clear with the ending of no way home with the venom mm-hmm. slash eddie thing and again mm-hmm. spoiler alert uh if you if you uh didn't see it is uh um if you it didn't see, that, spoiler so, alert, if you didn't yeah. see Venom, go watch Venom. Right, but spoiler alert for No Way Home also is that at the end, and the credits, you see that Eddie was pulled in to MCU Universe, but he, was, but he left back. So it wasn't like he just stayed. Mm-hmm. So... And but the going Morbius, back to Morpheus, yeah. Yeah, or and the Morbius... Morbius, the Morbius movie is taking place in the Venomverse. So, depending on how they do that, they might... I mean, we're not going to expect to see a new character in both universes. It's just going to no. be confusing. So, if they're going to go off of that little Easter egg that they put in there, we'd probably have a better chance of seeing Black Cat in the Venomverse, which is something that we talked about a long time ago when Venom mm-hmm. and Craven were rumored for a long time before the first Venom came out. Because they're the more adult characters of Spider-Man, um, and uh, the so part of one of the conversations we're going to have is talking about if if that Easter egg is in there, are they forced to have Black Cat, or can it be one of those things where maybe it's just going to be Easter egg in there, they'll never touch it again, but Black Cat will be in the MCU? Because obviously not going to be. Right. Yeah. And like, I know we talked about it before. If you've seen the trailer, that trailer specifically, um, with the timelines and how the universe is and such like that. And even with the, um, just comic book universe, it's possible that could be her father still too, depending on the age gap and the age change. And so we might see that route where 
it go like you you'll like people will see the father because um or she's still like in because if you look at the old um if you look at the animated series you know she had a really well not a relationship but she knew that the who he was and um when like because when um i'm gonna butcher his name because i always do more more Morbius. Sorry, I always butcher that name. I'm horrible with uh, pronunciations, so forgive me on that. Um, but in the animated series, like she knew who he was, but he was older than her. So like she, she knew he was more of like her father's age or a little bit older than that. She still was in fact, uh, Felicia Hardy was infatuated with him, but she wasn't a love interest of him. So they weren't around the same age. It was just more of like wanting to make sure he was safe and saved. So it's possible that that's how they might fit that in there too, is that she might be the daughter uh, and he knows who really the black cat is, who is her father. Um, or something like that. Or they could, as we all know, if, um, I mean, if you have seen Amazing Spider-Man 2, you know um, Felice, uh, Felicity uh, Jones played a character called Felicia Hardy in that movie. Yes, it was a very small cameo. It was very blip on pretty much, but she was working in Oscorp. She had like um, a total of like, five minutes worth of time in the movie. Right. And so, and that, they might, but I know she's done like Rogue One and all these other, and she's very well known and she's a very good actress, but I don't know if they would bring her back in and then she would play Felicia Hardy and we wouldn't see Black Cat until later. Or right. if we wouldn't see actually Black Cat, we would see Felicia Hardy. And then in the MC, we would see Black Cat, not Felicia Hardy. I don't know. We'll see. So I believe, all right, so we'll, we'll talk about... Let's call it the Venomverse first, mm -hmm. aka yeah. Sonyverse. We'll call it. We'll call it the Sonyverse. Sonyverse. Uh, so let, let's first talk about that because it seems like before Spider-Man No Way Home, the only way we were ever going to see Black Cat was in the Sonyverse. It was just yeah. the only way. Uh, you got Venom literally eating people. It looks like it's going to same thing with Morbius. Morbius just going to be killing because he's supposed to be a vampire. You know, the it, it's it's the only way you're able to introduce that kind of stuff without right. having limits, uh, unless you decide not to call it a rated R movie, which is kind of what they were doing with like Venom and Carnage, but they still like Carnage is still mutilating people. But let's start off with the Sony verse because we already have a couple things from the Sony verse that tell us Black Cat's around, whether or not mm -hmm. she is Black Cat yet, or if she's or you know if it's whatever. So we know a couple things. One is because they they came out with a statement X amount of days after the release of No Way Home that they implied that the Andrew Garfield, Amazing Spider-Man universe, Venomverse, Morbius universe are the same one. They didn't get into mm -hmm. the details about it, but by Marvel knowledge, I would assume that means that the Spider-Man that you see on the wall art of the Morbius trailer is Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Yeah. Now, Again, like Amber was saying, we don't know the timeline. I would assume, based on just continuity, that they're just moving forward with regular time and all this stuff that's been happening in the recent movies are after Amazing Spider-Man 2. Right. The, and we're not even taking account their crossover into the MCU because, obviously, because we assume they're going to forget, so it's just going to continue off. So the let's assume... That tomorrow we find out, or today, like we just found out before this, that there's a rumor that there's going to be a Black Cat movie. Mm -hmm. Last chance going to be it's going to be part of the Sonyverse. Right. Now, I I could see what they would do, because they've already hinted at it a long time ago, was they were going to do a Black Cat movie. The best yeah. chance you would get the best thing out of Black Cat would probably be if it was in the Sonyverse. Because yeah, they would actually that. give her her own thing. They were rumoring for a long time to give her and Silver Sable, mm -hmm. like a movie, a dual yeah. movie. Yeah, which, which would be have been cool. I, I, you know, it, it's been done. They've had a lot of things together. I think it would have been kind of a combo that is too early, kind of like a a duo that should not exist when they first enter the the silver screen. That's true. I see that. Yeah. 
I could see it being a thing where Black Cat's the main line, and then maybe she's being hunted down by Silver Sable. Right. Or it could be, um, so, and I'm going, uh, let me see if I remember my symbi- uh, symbiotes. Um, so there is a comic that it wasn't, it's not Venom, it's not Carnage. I think it's Mayhem. I think Mayhem. Okay. I think, um, attaches to, well, doesn't attach to Black Cat, but Black Cat becomes one of their, like, I guess I would say like pawns or so and gets right. infected with the, the, the symbiote. Um, it's not a full attachment, like how venom is or carnage is, but it is an actual attachment where they become kind of like controlled by mayhem. I think it's mayhem. Okay. You can, can so it might be something like that where, potentially and obviously it would be something where like i could see where they could say in a venom movie let's say venom comes across mayhem and then he has to fight off these pawns of mayhem which one of them is ends up being black cat and we don't fully see her like fixed but we see her defeated with the symbiote and so then you know she's back to her normal form and that could be a gateway into that sony verse possibly but i know it is a stretch because of the way that they're doing venom and we could go into detail and whole we could have a whole nother podcast on just how venom's being done but um the way venom is being done it seems not likely but it is something that they if they wanted to pull a little nuance from a comic book and they wanted to pull other characters that do not exist currently in the Sony-verse, they could pull those into that because there's a couple other characters that are pawns of that symbiote. See, so, I think that's going yeah. a little bit too far into it. I don't think that... Okay, so if they did a Black Cat thing, I think they would probably spend... Let's, 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 use, let's use the Venom movie as a, mm-hmm. as a guideline. If so, you haven't seen Venom, stop now. <laughs> well, at this point, if you haven't seen Venom yet, I apologize, but you're going to figure it out. I mean, it's it's been around for a little while. So, yeah. so in the uh, bonus synopsis, Venom doesn't actually really show himself attached to Eddie until roughly about 50% of the way through the movie, as a regular right. superhero movie goes. If it follows right. the line of them falling into like a pit of some kind of thing or them getting their powers a super odd way... It really doesn't happen until about halfway through. Right. So if we followed a, let's say, I think personally, if they did the Sony thing their way, the best way if they did a, let's call it an origin story of Black Cat, mm-hmm. is that it starts off following Felicia in college or some kind of really good university or something like that. And then you find out that she's been slowly but surely obsessed about trying to find her father and she's been getting very good at tracking him. Uh, And then you start seeing like there's a wall of different kind of like she's been able to find like snippets of the black cat, even though she shouldn't know that her father is the black cat. Yeah, I mean, they could do it that way. She she actually breaks her father out of jail. Right. But he doesn't know her because she's grown up. Right. But but in this case, you wouldn't have to know her, but it'd be one of those things that what would happen is she'd find him. He would have, he would have distracted him. He would have got caught, but because she's there, she would have got caught too. They're both in prison. They're both not in prison. They'd be jailed by whoever caught them, whatever gang or whatever group Mm -hmm. caught them. They meet each other under very terrible circumstances. She's not very happy now seeing her father the way he is. He now sees his daughter, which he tried to avoid. And in the process while they're captured, uh, it goes to a story where she has to try to free him, so she has to learn a couple different tricks uh, during it. Uh, but it, it could it could go that route. It would allow her to yeah. have an origin story. But I think the problem with giving Black Cat a solo film, as much as I know you want it, is to give her an exclusive villain. Right, I know. And so I don't think they're truly, like, I really don't think we're going to get an origin story, unfortunately. I mean, they I were think planning we're on get, it. 
I but think I, we're gonna get like a flashback. Like I have, I have even in this uh, Black Cat uh, Silver Sable like uh, idea that they were gonna do. I don't truly think they were gonna show an origin story. I think they were gonna do like a flashback or like stories. You know, when they're having the conversations, what happened? You know, you know that kind of stuff. That building the character well, style when you're you talking to other characters. Let's put a comparison. Let's put a comparison. So. A lot of you don't know exactly who Black Cat is, or maybe you don't know why it'd be so difficult to pull her in. Let's go DC Universe. You said mm -hmm. earlier that the comparison to Black Cat is Catwoman. I'm not yep. going to pull it up on my phone right now because I forgot which one came first. But DC and Marvel has a lot of parallels. They got a lot of characters that match each other. Black Cat came first, okay. I believe. So Black Cat came first. I but all, I, but I'm pretty DC sure. and Marvel has constantly copied characters off and then rewrote them as someone else. Whether mm -hmm. they're main characters or, like, for example... DC has a Spider-Man. He's a villain, but he's like a villain's rarely brought in. Same thing as Batman. There is a version of Batman, which they're coming out, which is basically Moon Knight. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. uh, so let's bring up Catwoman. Catwoman is essentially uh, uh, Catwoman is to Batwoman. Uh, Catwoman is to Batman as Black Cat is to Spider-Man. The only difference is yeah. Batman already goes down the aggressive route. So right. There is always a character that I believe are in some of the best hero stories that is kind of like you love to see them together, but realistically, they're bad they're for oil, each other. They're, they're oil and water. They're not mm -hmm. meant to be together. So, right. you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 for example, I know plenty of people have seen the, the uh, Daredevil on Netflix. Season two, mm -hmm. they brought in Elektra. Yep. Throughout the whole mm -hmm. season, it sounds really good for them to be together, but then you find out that realistically she brings out the worst out of daredevil and he figures yeah. out that as much as 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 much as he is terribly in love with her realistically he can't be with her and he eventually figures out the end like you are terrible for me now i'm not saying right. that's like always black cat's thing but realistically a lot of times is black cat kind of wants spider-man to be more spider-man less peter Right. Which Peter is kind of like the good moral side of Spider-Man. Yeah, and, and I could see that. I could see where they could put uh, it kind of that parallel, which would be a good parallel if they want to go down the route where um, Black Kent becomes more of like the crime bra style and yeah. keeping style, which would be really good seeing that they are playing it. They are trying to pull those characters that were originally from their own shows into mm -hmm. like the Marvel universe like that. If they did something like that, now that wouldn't be the Sony verse. That right. would be then, more of the Marvel, the MC. The I think so, if they did the Sony verse, I wouldn't hate it because we'd still get a Black Cat movie. We'd probably get right. more Black Cat than the MCU would because I don't think Black Cat would ever get a solo film in the MCU. But I think the problem, and I don't want to say that Black Cat can't exist without Spider-Man. No, she can't. Does her, does her story work out better at the beginning with Spider-Man? I'm going to say yes because mm -hmm. it's not like saying like this heroine requires a hero for a story to work. It's just saying that for you to understand her character correctly, she needs to play off that bad side to a good hero. And the right. way that Sonyverse is doing it, they're not technically giving good heroes. They're giving the anti-heroes, which is right. which is probably why they were planning to make one because she is she follows the anti-hero thief line right, right on the nail. Right, and I think they would have probably, and we don't know, obviously, we don't know if a, a, that that movie will come to fruition or not. But um, I think it's I have a, first. I, I have, have a feel. Is. I have a feeling that the Black Cat and Silver Sable movie would have probably more been not when because where that tie-in comes into is later on, and while while Black Cat is becoming the crime boss kind of style more. And I think that that's where they could do, like they could, they could literally jump and not show any of her backstory and show all of the crap that happened to her, her training, her first years of being, uh, being a cat burger, her dad, all of that backstory and jump to where she is the big bad crime boss 
of mm-hmm. New York, that if they did that, and or if they jumped to her, like the same thing as her when she owns the 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 bar without a name, um, and like maybe Eddie walks in or something. I don't know if they wanted to do that. I'm I just feel afraid like afraid of a solo movie because I just right. I'll bring up one movie, Catwoman. Yep, I know. And but I know it was that's also a long at that time. time. Ago. Yeah, it was that time. But realistically, you had an amazing actress, Halle mm-hmm. Berry. You had the right... I forgot who the, the writer was and director, but they were... They, they were good. Great yeah, movies. they were good. But the thing was is that when you take an antihero, especially if the antihero is a female... Unfortunately, yes. give her her own movie, <laughs> unfortunately, they want to try to make her a heroine. Which right. I don't believe that you can really do with Black Cat, at least not permanently. Yeah, no, she she flip flops, and that's yeah. the whole th- the whole idea is that she's good. She does what she wants. She does what benefits her. So if it benefits her to be good and team up with Spider Man or Daredevil for this or the Avengers or whatever, because she does become an Avenger um, eventually, but. To do all of those things, it's the benefit for her, not, and usually she has a motive. Uh, And being being bad or bad-ish, it's benefiting her still, Mm -hmm. her motive, her, because that's one of her things her father put into her tale as a child, as to do what best fits you. Mm -hmm. Take what you want to take. Do do you be who you want to be instead of, you know, like kind of, I feel like her father and her mother kind of to a point put in those like ideas of, yeah, they do it in a way that makes it seem like is creating a criminal. But you know what I mean is um, she was never limited. Oh, that's a, you need to be a lady. Oh, you need to be lady style. She just did whatever she wanted. And she still does whatever she wants in all of the new comics, too. Yes, and I feel like if we're talking about the Catwoman, that was also during the time when superhero movies weren't really popular. There wasn't the, like, there was us who were, you know, nerds and comic book geeks that loved this idea of having something on the screen, the big screen, obviously it didn't work out the greatest. It's still really, it was still good for certain aspects, but it still obviously didn't work out the best. And now we have this plethora of people who just love, you know, superhero movies. And it's not because, and yes, there's that whole, there's those gray areas and there's those whole line where there's the big people who are comic book nerds. And then there's the people who are just there to see the action and just like the idea on the surface and all of that stuff. So I could see where, um, an actual solo movie could work obviously because the, the want of superhero movies are out there, but also at the same time, I could see where it could be not as good because of the fact that we've already seen where it's hard, especially with a complex character like she is. And I'm not saying she's the most complex character in the Marvel universe. That's for sure not. But she's a complex character. That's the one good thing that Marvel does is they they make the complexity of their characters very, like, vary and they also make them so that they're relatable so there's portions of her that are super relatable but she also is telling a message and also shows a dark side of society so i feel like they would not want to show that dark side obviously that's why in any mention of her previously in any of the you know animated series or uh film series they they have tiptoed around where her background is and what has happened to her and so on, how her father was a, was a crime person, all that kind of stuff. They've kind of tiptoed around that to a point because they want to show the nice side, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like you said earlier, the best bet would be have her in the Sony universe because we could see a criminal 
criminal side and we could get a nitty gritty kind of uh, movie when it comes to and show that side of her. I would be so happy to see that side on a big screen because it would bring to light all of these things. Like it bring a voice to, you know, obviously um, victims of sexual assault. It would bring a, a voice to, you know, like the fact that you like just you just because, you know, um, uh, where was I going with my train of thought? Just because, you know, uh, of one one instance in your life that doesn't shape you, it uh, doesn't make you who you are, but it can shape how you become kind of thing. So, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but I agree. I feel like the Sony verse is, re- is where we're probably going to see her, but I just mm. don't know how they're going to bring her in. Now, yeah. if we would, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, just to, just to move us a little bit forward, the uh, it, you know, the Sonyverse itself is not my favorite, so I'd mm-hmm. really not be a fan if I did if we did find out tomorrow that Sony decided to say they grabbed the rights to Black Cat and they're going to make right. a movie for her. Would I be so pissed that I wouldn't want to go see it and I wouldn't get hyped for a Black Cat movie? No, but what I immediately think. God, why couldn't the MCU grab her? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the difference between who's going to do it right and who's going to give her more time. Sony will give her more time, but Sony has a habit of changing the story. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. For I know 70% of the crowd loves the Sony verse right now because mm-hmm. they like they like what they did with Venom. Do I like what they did with Venom? No. We are kind of a uh, a symbi- uh, like purist, I guess. So, to a point. so my favorite storyline of Spider Man is a symbiote uh, is the is uh, the symbiote storyline where he black actually black. first gets back. Uh, yeah, where he gets his well, black. back to black. Is but, it, no, it's not that one. Okay, no. so he he first gets a symbiote before he understands it's actually a symbiote. Right after um, the first. Um, God, what what is the uh, the first the, uh, battle? It's not battle world. It's uh, I can't think of it. Uh, Secret but, Wars. Uh, his, what's that? Are you talking about Secret Wars? Secret Wars. Thank you. Uh, where he doesn't know that it's actually Simbi he's wearing. He just thinks it's a machine that created him in an outfit that just makes him a little more powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love this Simbi storyline. Uh, I try to keep in touch with the current Simbi storyline uh, about Null and stuff like that, which is going to kind of connect to why I think this is all circling around. Mm-hmm. So let's let's switch it over to the MCU, and I'm going to first before we continue before before we bounce back and forth, I'm going to explain my reasoning through all the slooping I've done as far <laughs> as just one plus two equals three of why I think it would make sense for for this to come this way. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, I secretly want it to come that way. So other yeah. than us wanting it. <laughs> so, all right, let, let's, let's be fair here. Let's just get done with MJ. MJ has had three movies in mm-hmm. the, in the uh, Sam Raimi, Tommy McGuire, Spider-Man. Don't, She's- don't get me wrong. She did great. The, the mm-hmm. actress, over the years that have done MJ, don't get me wrong. We don't. We're not. Job. We're not, not. We're not haters of MJ. But she's had she's had her three movies mm-hmm. in the Tom Holland franchise yep. uh, as being MJ. Uh, even though they didn't really classify her as MJ until technically this movie, they just always called her uh, a different name because they didn't want to specifically specify her as Mary Jane Michelle Watson. Jones. Yeah, Michelle Jones uh, and. Uh, the, uh, uh, um, so with the ending of the, of the movie and us completing what I like to think of as the youth part, even though they're kind of flipping around because technically Spider-Man wouldn't have been an adventure until he was more seasoned, but mm-hmm. they were flipping around. He finished his whole thing with the adventures to make things work better with Sony. They're going to give him more. Spider-Man stuff, less Avenger stuff as we move forward. Allowing him to right. tackle more of Spider-Man's rogues gallery. Mm-hmm. So, 
if we want to be smart about this, which I like to think that the MCU does, we're not mm-hmm. going to redo villains, even though that they weren't technically Tom Holland's villains. So let's say we don't include the Vulture, unless we decide <clears> to bring him back for something, but I would assume we kind of leave him alone for a little while. Uh, Vulture, we don't bring back um, Mysterio, because mm-hmm. presumably if they didn't bring Mysterio back in this movie, we're going to assume that he is legitimately dead. dead. Yeah. yeah, Because there was, there was rumors that maybe he's the sixth Sinister Six, and it was all illusion, he's actually not dead. But let's assume Quentin Beck is dead. Uh, let's assume that the MCU is going to copy and paste, and since Tom Holland already fought against uh, Sam Raimi's Doc Ock, we're not going to mm-hmm. include Doc Ock. We're not going to include the Lizard. We're not going to include Sandman. We're not going to include Electro. And then we're not going to include Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. Now, let's take into account what we already know as far as them you drop in consistent Easter eggs on us. Mm-hmm. Ned, his best friend, is also the guy who constantly is Hobgoblin. And I'm not going to say all well, the time. In the comics, usually. In the comics. Yes. In the comics. And Let's also, spoiler alert, do, do, we won't talk about the movie. But no. um, but yes, in the comics, he 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 does. He becomes right. So yeah, this is Hobgoblin. the story that happened, but Ned, Ned's character in the comics sometimes is the Hobgoblin. And they mm-hmm. sometimes there's, there's yeah. Easter eggs here and there. Uh, if you watch the movie, look for them. You'll see it. Uh, if you don't know what you're talking about, we're talking about, and you've watched the movie, go look it up on you uh, YouTube for up. Easter Easter eggs. I'm sure you'll find it. They could follow the same thing as the Green Goblin storyline. Something happens. He kind of gets kind of a, a a darker side coming up and he takes the serum and he becomes Hobgoblin instead of Green Goblin. Um, the, so it, it, you know, we're, we've already eliminated probably the most popular, like Spider-Man rogues gallery members. I guess so. Yeah, I would think so. So I I think at this point, even Shocker has been kind of used. Now, Obviously, oh, there, yeah. has been constant, yeah. there has been consistent rumors about Scorpion coming back. Right. right. Because we haven't really had Scorpion. We've had, we've had, we've had, a, we've had the guy who, who's Scorpion without being Scorpion, and he's got a right. Scorpion tattoo. Yeah. And uh, I, I can't remember the name of, of, of the actual guy who becomes Scorpion, but the, uh, uh, Matt Gargan, Matt Gargan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, they made a huge teaser at the end of, uh, homecoming, where you would assume that he's creating sinister sticks, but whatever. Uh, you might get a rhino, what, whatever. But at this point, it's kind of like if they're smart about it and they want to milk him a little bit as far as Tom Holland, give him a break for four years. Mm-hmm. Let him, let time in the MCU move so that way we could justify why we're going to say that now he's like 22 not 18 years old i would yeah. assume let, let, let's just go off logic he would have been graduated from high school uh, and yeah. no way home so let's assume he's 18 years old mm-hmm. so if we give him four years and we allow to say that four years of time in our world is four years past the mcu he'd be 22 let's say mm-hmm. he's consistently doing spider-man stuff during that time 22 is a good time where we can say he's been a little bit more adult. Let's say promiscuous. Well, yeah, you're you're early 20s, and I can say this because I'm in like my mid 30s. Your early 20s are for, you know, all of the fun. You're experimenting your life. You're learning who you are as an adult. Like, uh, you're usually living on, uh, like, fully living on your own or with roommates and dealing with that kind of stuff. You might be in college. You might not be. You might have your first, like, real job kind of thing besides, you know, waiting tables or whatever. Like, and I'm not saying that that's not a real job, but you know, like your high school jobs that you would have after school, you're on, like, you're in a pace. You're starting to make your money. You're starting to see who you hang out with. You're starting to figure out who you are and you're, you try a whole bunch of different things because, you know, that's how you learn about who you are. So, yes, I so, see like where the, you're coming from. The scenario here that I have in my head, if let's, if they want to at least dabble in a little Black Cat in Spider-Man 4, 
and, and, and just for clarification, in case any of you are kind of like wondering, well, Tom Holland's done. Well, in case you don't know, he did sign up for another three movies with the MCU. Yes. Now, I don't expect them to be adventures movies just because I'm assuming that Sony's trying to, because Sony is white knuckle grabbers, they probably are going to try to, if the MCU wants to keep them, they'll be like less adventures, more Spider Man. So right. I'm going to assume it's going to be more Spider Man or let's just say New York things, which mm-hmm. means you could intersect with Daredevil, you could intersect with the Defenders, you could intersect with She Hulk. Oh, that Stuff would be like so that. awesome. So, if like, you know, she like I just can picture it. She Hulk's having like a coffee date with one of their clients outside and then all of a sudden you see Spider-Man swinging through the background and right. it's like that would be so cool. Sorry. So, I so, just So forgive um, my little tangent. So so here here's my thought in the process. Um like I was saying earlier, let's say we're done with Mary, the the character mary jane watson well she's, michelle she's, jones yes right which i'm a we're not going to bring it MJ. we're not going to have we're not going to we're not going to have tom holland date another MJ, MJ. whether it's a mary yeah. jane watson or it's a michelle jones or a margaret jensen or whatever like that <laughs> it's, it's it's let's just say the mj thing is done let's mm-hmm. assume that we're not going to reuse gwen again Mm. I'm not saying it's not impossible, but I would assume that the MCU, knowing how popular Spider Gwen is, would rather bring up Spider Gwen, not Gwen. Right. Now, yes, yeah. they're the same person, but they're different. They're different Earths. And when yeah. I say that, Spider Gwen, um, except in fan fiction, Spider Gwen and Peter Parker don't actually get together. No, they're like brother and sister. Well, yeah, essentially, like style. In, in, yeah. In, in, and they do it pretty good into in the movie Into the Spider Verse. Is that mm-hmm. in that in, in in her world, uh, in her world, uh, she got bit by the spider, mm-hmm. but she was still she still looked up to Peter, but Peter became the lizard. So it's kind of like yeah. a different scenario. It's I know a bunch of people have fan fiction about Spider Gwen and Spider Man being together. It's, it's, it's a weird, weird thing. I don't follow it. I'm all yeah. for the Miles and Gwen thing. That's because yeah, for me uh, and like just to go on a little tangent there. For me, I see them as like brother and sister. Like he, that's his little sister t- taking care of her because there's so much of a year difference in that one. Like most of the, like of that, so it would be kind of strange. Yes, Miles and Gwen. Totally. But like, yeah, going back gonna, to what you're saying. Upset too many teenagers and people in the 20s that love, and don't get me wrong, I love it too, the Miles Gwen storyline. Yes. And, it's and super cute. Let's let's get this on the board here. As popular as it is, it's still new. I think it came out like in 2015 or something like that. Like their story is relatively new. I don't uh, know when it came out. I don't follow it enough Miles, to Miles know. Miles is not yeah. an old hero. Like he's, no, he's a newer one. Gwen but he's adorable. Like, oh. Yeah, he's so, so cute. Um, so let's assume that the MCU is at least temporarily done with with MJ. Mm-hmm. And let's say they don't, don't go to want Stacey. to. They want to be smart about it. They don't touch Gwen Stacy. They touch Spider Gwen. So, who does that leave us? Now, yes, that's more than just Felicia. Yeah, it. there's a few others. Eddie Brand. Well, they uh, kind of touched Betty Brand already. She was right. the girl who was the does, newscaster. Yeah, she but, does like the digital news for the school. But uh, they could bring her back. I, I assume they wouldn't touch her because at this point, no one would know him as Peter yeah. Parker. It would have fit better if he was still going to school because that's how they date is because they go to school together. Unless mm-hmm. for some reason they said the reca- uh, uh, not recaster, decided to bring that same uh, actress into wherever he's going to go is get his GED and it comes into like some kind of joke that how are you this smart but you're redoing high school kind of thing like that. Yeah, something like, like that. that. I don't Anyways, think really set the way yeah. home, but Otherwise, I mean, there's a couple others if they want to do a callback from like but Amazing honestly, Spider-Man and Friends, but yeah. I mean, MCU, just like a lot of other superhero movies, won't touch a hero without having even a little bit of a love interest. Mm-hmm. Thor and Jane, Captain yeah. America, and Peggy, Iron Man, and uh, um, Pepper Potts. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, 
Uh, there will always be a love interest, even if they don't approach the romantic part of it. There'll always be the opposite sex, or you know, in some of the movies now, they're going to go with same sex. So the it would be highly probable that the next Tom Holland Spider-Man movie would be would be Black Hat. It's uh, possible, yes. The, the the possibilities are quite high. Now, mm-hmm. especially if they decide to do more adult, it would be very. I personally think stupid for them not to throw her in there because at this point this is when the world can accept a character like her yeah especially four more years down the road if the mcu keeps if the where MCU they're going and world yep. opinions keep moving the way that you do four years later black cat in there is gonna be really cool it would it would be really cool to see too because i mean we've already seen marvel you know, bring out the big, like, bring out those big uh, society questions. Like, we saw it in The Winter Soldier and Falcon. Mm-hmm. What, uh, uh, at the end, where he's like, uh, where, you know, with the whole, um, when they were talking about it, uh, about it not oh, being a race it. thing, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Um, we've already seen them bring it out in other areas of different things. We've obviously seen with Wak- uh, Wakanda and the Black Panther. Really we've seen, race, and they're sort we, of really we, talking about LGBTQ stuff. Right. They started talking about those things too. So in, um, I, it would be perfect if they did, because then they could definitely bring light to like as we said awareness you know because and it it would be awesome i think i think it would be smart for the mc to do also because they're already they already at like they already touch those little topics that can become well can become fireable like you know kind of thing where they can become something that but they they actually force you to think, you know, and they make you to have those conversations with your friends, your family, that kind of stuff, but all in the contents of a superhero. And I mean, the comics have always done that. We know that with all different comics and not just the and the Marvel universe, but with the DC universe and all Red Horse, uh, Red, or Dark, Dark Horse. Horse. Sorry, uh, I'm getting too fast in my <laughs> thought process, but we know that comics have always been somewhere an art form where those society issues or questions or thoughts can be talked about, right? And they force you to think, you know? So it'd be great. It would be smart for them to like bring another aspect to that. Right. And it, it, it doesn't have to be like Spider-Man Black Hat to get together it can be just like think of us. Okay, so this is a scenario that I have in my head of how this would work. So <laughs> let's assume that where they're going with Peter is basically him getting fully committed to moving forward with his life, not looking backwards. Meaning mm-hmm. that he's going to focus specifically on getting his GD, going mm-hmm. to college, and being Spider Man. Don't yeah. do romantic attachments. Because him, from what I can translate, is him looking at at uh, MJ was him kind of seeing no spoilers. It, no spoilers. It's just him just seeing that it's not good. But right. so I would assume that he's going to take that copy and paste. So right. what I can see is so a scenario in the movie. Maybe we don't have like a big villain maybe that's when they introduce uh scorpion because i could see now that they're really showing in the comics scorpion's actually created with the funding of j jonah jameson Mm -hmm. jonah jameson now i could see the i want to unmask the spider let's make let's make gargan scorpion and i want you to unmask spider-man that's usually how it works out Mm mm-hmm Let's say, but let's say Scorpion is kind of a back villain. Count kind of those yeah. things. Think of it like, um, let's say, Thor, let's say Thor Ragnarok. Very mm-hmm. good. Main mm-hmm. villain is Hela, right? Mm-hmm. But for seventy-five percent of the movie, 
Thor is not on Asgard. So right. let's say in the back of the movie, much like how El Hell is on Asgard, you see J. Jonas Jameson working with Matt Gargan as a scientist to create him as a scorpion for later on. But mm-hmm. during the middle part, because Spider-Man's not obviously present for that, he's doing things with Black Cat. So it's mm-hmm. a movie where he's fully focused. He's determined on this. When he's at school, he might be falling asleep at class. So there's a constant thing. Uh, for example, if you know the Sam Raimi universe, uh, you, there, there's a constant joke that he's oh, he's the laziest. Was it? He's the laziest genius or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. like, that's because of him being Spider-Man. He's falling asleep all the time because he's he's working so much as Spider-Man. So you could have one of his. Um, fellow students notice this and kind of be like, who is this lazy guy? Maybe not really attracted to Peter, but on the side is actually moonlighting as a black cat going in and stealing things. Peter himself looking at the, uh, at the police band on his phone sees black cat strikes again. He tries to try to get ahead of it. Meets black cat, black cat, fast him. Uh, maybe, Maybe she cuts him in the arm and he gets like a little bruise or something like that. And then she noticed at school the next day that Peter's holding his shoulder. Mm, yeah. Figures it out. Then she starts following Peter like, you're getting in my way. So I'm going to stalk you and get in your way. Like, mm-hmm. that's with my life. So I'm going to mess with your life. And then maybe at the end, that's when Scorpion comes in and Peter can't beat him by himself. So as a, as kind of like a thing, she helps beat Scorpion. With him, kind of like, mm-hmm. a girl, but at the end, she's like, it kind of turns into a thing where she disappears. Like it's very much like a, right. a kind of thing. But in the middle, they see they, you later. <laughs> yeah, it, there there could be some sexual tension in the middle. They might get together for one thing, but then she disappears the next morning. Um, you know, waking up. But they don't even. I think. I think, yes, I like that idea, but I think they should just do, you know, because what's the best, like, what's the best part of movies when you see a love interest is that kind of like that, uh, not awkward, but that like before they get to uh, get together kind of stage where they're flirting, you know, it's almost, but not, they like, they get interrupted or that kind of stuff. So... I if feel like that, that would right. be cool. The, I think that would be that cool. Right, I could see. I could see maybe Peter putting on the moves too much to Felicia, and then Felicia immediately turn off because she doesn't want to. She doesn't want anything to do with Peter. Right. But then, but then when it's Spider Man, well, then, I really still think like like I said before, I would be really upset if they make her fall uh, fall in love with Peter. Oh well, uh, I'm not so, saying that. I'm just saying, but, like, like to like athlete. Peter, I think I think it would be cool if, like, maybe he, maybe he's not, you know, trying to. He's like focusing on his studies and all that stuff. But as Spider Man, he gets a little like he gets intrigued by her, like you know, and like there's always we always see it in comics where like he's he's on the side of a wall and she's like pressed up against him or whatever. She's mm-hmm. the one making kind of the moves and then she like darts off and does whatever and right. like leaves him kind of hanging there kind of thing. I feel like that would be cool. And maybe then like, even if she does know that he like ends up knowing that he, like how you said he, she know either follows him, maybe follows him home one night or whatever and finds out it's Peter or, you know, like she sees the scratch or something on his arm at school or whatever they do it that way. Yeah. Um, I still think that would be cool, but I think she would, I think it would be really cool if she still just only flirts with him or be as seductive if she's in, if he's in black, like in his Spider-Man costume. That's and, it. And, and, and the other thing too is, uh, I'll just say spoiler. I'm not going to say what it is, but we now have a reason to believe that the symbiote exists in the MCU. Yes. Yes. So this could also follow the, uh, what is it? Web of Shadows storyline where Peter knows that the, that the cat is not good for him, but they could also oh, the yeah. symbiote, where the symbiote itself, it follows the storyline that you, if you're not wearing the symbiote, you're good, so you stay with 
MJ. You put on the symbiote, you follow the darker storyline, and it just happens to be that you follow the storyline with Black Cat. Yeah, you so go back to it. It's yeah, because it happens when he's still he's back with MJ, already had her like a thing with Black Cat, but then all of a sudden they could kind the, of go for this uh, yeah. new where he'd get the symbiote, but instead of having him follow the traditional symbiote storyline, they could kind of have it where maybe his his moral high, his moral line is gone, and that even affects like his judgment with the cat. Mm-hmm. That could like, be interesting. Like, yeah. Instead of her like breaking in, he like shatters like glass to be like, "Why do you need to sneak in here?" And then grabs her like some pearls or something like that. Like, right. Goes, yeah, I feel like that would be cool. Um, I still like the idea because we t- it took so long. Like, okay, we know that it took so long to show a passionate. Um, aside with him and MJ, right? Mm-hmm. And that was because of the fact oh, of... Oh, well. Yeah, you're frozen. Um, but, you know, they they saw that and they had... Uh, it took a while, right? So I feel like the first, like these next set of movies, if they are going to do a set of three um, just Spider-Man movies, that it should be like that. The first one is that introduction stuff oh no now your camera's gone are you okay okay um that it's that inner like thing where it's like the setup kind of stuff oh you're back hi Hi. (laughs) um so like you know it builds up kind of thing and then you know i personally would love if it builds up until the last set of the three movies and then it becomes a thing you know more so or even near the end of the second movie because i feel like to get the interest of like the crowd and also and we're not talking like we're not getting into this whole like true on romance movies or all that crap like you know we're not talking about any of that kind of stuff we're talking about that kind of like intrigue and like you know almost but not so far like kind of thing um i just think it would be cool that way Mm -hmm. and then like you said they team up to beat uh scorpion Scorpion, uh, scorpion and maybe when they are done she like jumps on top of uh scorpion and then goes that was fun. See you around, Spidey. And uh, runs off, you know, kind of right. thing. Like that kind of stuff. Because that would be totally her. Uh, I mean, I've done it as a, as a cosplayer. That I've had Spider-Man cosplayers go, oh, say something. I'd be like, well, that was fun, Spidey. See you later. Kind of thing. And just walk off, like kind of stuff. Or his classic line, next time, keep the mask on. <laughs> like right. kind of thing. You know, kind of thing. So, I mean, we'll like, never get all of it. Well, we'll get, we'll probably get 50% be, of what you want. And right, I mean, but it will that's, still, that's how I am with Spider Man. I mean, right. as much but as Tom Holland is awesome with Spider Man, I still don't get what I want out of him. Right. But as long as we would get 50%, or if we get, you know, even just, do her du- justice kind of thing. I That was what I thought was lacking in Amazing Spider-Man 2 is, yes, I know they were just focusing on Felicia Hardy and trying to throw a whole bunch of people into that movie, like all kinds of people. Um, but they didn't do her justice. And I just want, a, I just, even if she's just a, por- a small part of a movie. I just want to give her justice because she's one of my favorites and I know I'm not the only one. And she's got a huge fan base, not just from, you know, um, comic book guys who love comic books because of, obviously, I mean, Black Cat is a s- sexy character, but also for fans that love the the backstory, love that dynamic she has with Spider-Man, that kind of stuff. And, you know, women who love the backstory too and who love the storyline. It just would be nice to see her given justice kind of thing. Speaking about giving her justice, we're going to talk about actresses that we want to play as a black actor. <laughs> True. So I believe that we kind of talked the topic enough about how properly fit mm-hmm. Black Cat into the story, whether it's the Sonyverse or the MCU. Right. I think we probably talked about what makes the Black Cat 
work properly that we don't want her butchered. Right. The big next topic that we've always debated about is what actress can properly play Black Cat correctly. Yeah, and remember now, we've had we've had we've gone back and forth on different car- uh, actresses for years. But no, yeah. we're not saying that we're not going to give it. A, we're, we're not going to we're not going to say that times change and different viewpoints of what looks more attractive is different. We just always see Black Cat as a curvy, um, strong, intelligent woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, obviously, we know that a lot of MCU uh, likes to bring out a younger, maybe more fit, athletic. Yeah, athletic look. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to talk about our personal, I wouldn't necessarily say our favorites, but out of the people that we can think of on top of our head, <laughs> right. these are the people I- who we think would properly work. And there's probably more actresses out there that would and like this is not a complete list obviously our our thought process changes on this for uh, like monthly probably i mean um, we're going to we're going to talk about this tomorrow and we're going to remember names that we didn't think of today like we right. talked about this I mean, before these are just things we're thinking be, about for the fly and there might be some really cool actresses out there that maybe i'm not even thinking about or even that Joe's thinking about or they may be not be well known i mean we've already seen it in the uh, Star Wars universe where they pull in these amazing actresses that hardly anybody knows about, you know, kind of thing. And so it's possible that that could happen too. Yeah. So I know I have some ideas and mind you, some of my ideas are from, have been around for a while. Um, and yes, I think maybe they wouldn't fit as well now. Obviously these some of these actresses might not fit as well now, but yeah, some might fit. So, well, so. I'm gonna, what we're going to do here is we're going to go turn by turn. Yeah. If we happen to pick one, which I think we tried to dodge to make sure we're not picking the same ones. Yes. Uh, we're going to, uh, if like you pick one and I happen to have it on my list, I'll mention I got it on my list and I'll cross it off and then we can talk about that person. Yes. Uh, so we'll take turns. We're going to start off with Amber first. So... Okay. What do you got? Okay. So, and this person, I've thought this for a really long time, ever since I've seen her in multiple things. Um, but I know she's, she's not, she's not a super young actress, but she's not, like, she's not, like, I guess I think we should, I guess we should say that age is not specific on here. If it's older, they could probably fit better into the Sony verse, younger, maybe in the right. MCU. Yeah. So I personally like, Christina Hendricks Hendricks because I just think just her look her she's played smart characters before she's played the ones where she's trying to trick people she she has a beautiful face I mean obviously question does she do action I thought she has done a couple I I don't I mean I know she was really popular in Mad Men and she's done she's like in a current TV show about like some about being like a group of mothers or something like that. It's like some kind right, of comedy or something, or something like, like that. that. Yeah. I just feel like she would be a good, a uh, good throwing, her, throwing a card in there for her because I feel like she would be a I mean, cool person. She would, I definitely think she could be more of a Sony verse version more. So, um, than the MC version, but yeah. I mean, I, 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 as much as I think that'd be cool, I don't think that even the Sony verse would do that because one is I don't see Christina Ricci, uh, not Ricci, uh, Christina Hendricks, technically doing. Maybe she's done action before, but maybe she hasn't done like high action stunt work action. Mm. And I could see her doing a lot more of that. And I could see that. Let's just say it right out there. Because of her breast size, I could see her not being doing that much stuff just because of. You know, being upside down, and okay, All right. big girls know this. There's fair ways enough. to fix that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, all right, so for me, uh, I kind of focused more on assuming that these that she's going to be in the MCU. That right. what my theory okay. is is going to be the same. Now, I yeah. do have a pattern here. Uh, younger. They might not necessarily be curvy, but I could see them fitting into the crowd that they've been bringing into the MCU for the Young Avengers and stuff like that. Oh, so, okay. 
Tim. So first off, we're going to start off with Olivia Holt. Okay. For any of you do not know, Olivia Holt actually played Dagger in Cloak and Dagger. Oh, uh, okay. But that, yeah. was a, that was a series that has nothing to do with the MCU. And since I'm pretty sure that's ended, MCU has taken... Marvel heroes that's already existed and pulled them Great. into the MCU. I didn't even think about her. So, she would be good. And at this age now, she's grown up a little bit. Apparently, she, I, I, uh, to be honest, I've never watched Cloak and Dagger, the TV show. I Both of us have read it, but uh, read the comic. But she's older now. I think her age is actually on par with Tom Holland. Yeah, I think she's that cute. would be. She's cute. She's blonde. Uh, if, she's done, if she's done Dagger... She's probably used to having a Marvel action scene going on. Right, yeah. I mean, this has happened before. Let's talk about Dinosaur and becoming Captain America. Yeah, you know, like it's yeah. it's not uncommon for the MCU to say, okay, you've done a Marvel movie for, movie before, you've done a DC movie before, but that is done. That's no longer canon. How mm -hmm. would you like to be a bigger character in the MCU? Right, so I could I see them see offering a job to her and being like, sure. Why? I mean, big money. That would be cool. Uh, that would be cool. And especially if it's in Spider-Man, I don't see why she would say no. On her current, I mean, like, it looks like she hasn't, as far as me looking on her IMDb, it looks like she hasn't done anything new since 2019, her being a Cloak and Dagger. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if Cloak and Dagger is technically done. I know it was a freeform show, uh, which is, from what I understand, not canon in the MCU. Uh, I, mm. From what I understand, it's as canon as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is, where it, they might have considered it once upon a time, but then it kind of okay. drew off so much and like, okay, yeah, this isn't working anymore. I think I saw like one episode or so of, I, I've always wanted to watch that. I've never but I just hated never on got, the idea. I just I've never, I just never it. got, yeah, I never had a chance to go back and watch it. So, right. yeah. So I could see, I could see Olivia Holt being a... That would be cool. A very... A very, let's say, profitable choice due to her age. She's cute. She's pretty. Right. She, uh, she fits into the Disney norm mm -hmm. of a young female. Right. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, now, since Dagger is technically a damaged character, she might already know how to do damage to well. Right. True. True. So I think personally, her background could work. Yeah, okay, I get that. And so I'm going to jump around on my list for my next one because you <laughs> okay. just mentioned uh, 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 damaged characters. Okay. Um, so Madeline um, Pe Petrit, Petrit from Riverdale, oh, the yeah. redhead. Yeah. Um, obviously, her character, if you've not watched Riverdale, or Riverdale, um, I recommend watching it. I do like it. She is younger. She is known. She has her own YouTube. Like, she's very well known in the social world. And so, like, a lot of people would know her as an actress, too. Um, she That character is very... She pl plays a, a damaged character, pretty much. I think all of those girls in that one kind of play it a damaged character in some sort, but I think that she could be a, uh, a good fit because I know she's very into fitness and um, I could see her wanting to even pretty much um, like, cause she always has put kind of it, like from what I've seen, she's always put in kind of like the really like not dainty roles, but more of like the girly roles kind of thing. And right. I could see where she would like, I could just see her as an actress wanting to stretch something or her thoughts and stress, the ways stress, that she works. Uh, stretch out her acting muscles. Right. And I, and the fact that she is into fitness and stuff, she might even think of it a cool way to like, That's right. learn she's, got like a, she's got a contract with some fitness line, doesn't she? Yeah, I think so. I just know that on her YouTube channel, she does a lot of fitness stuff. Um, and she also does a lot of my life and me kind of thing. So I just feel like she would be a good fit. Mind you, um, she's a beautiful redhead. So they would have to dye her hair, but, um, like she, she has, I feel like she would be a good fit. Um, sure. especially with the younger crowd. She's around more of the age of Tom. What? Holland. I can't. Yeah. Holland. Sorry. I'm really bad at names. Um, but she she's around that age more. Um, so the the dynamic, she is um, more a petite 
actress too. So that would work too. And petite, I mean, by shortness, like uh, height wise. Um, so I feel like that could work well. Um, yeah. So the fact that you brought up more of that kind of backstory, I feel like that that could work out well. And I'm, I'd be curious to see the dynamic because I feel like it would either be the ke- the on screen chemistry would either be really good or it would be horrible. Like I don't know. <laughs> like, so uh, we just got a message in from Scarlet Spidey. Uh, he recommended uh, Catherine Grace uh, McNa- McNamara. She played Oliver Queen's daughter in the Arrowverse. I actually oh. have her on my list. I actually have her on my list. Uh, okay, so, then talk about your reasoning. Okay, so uh, let me let me just uh, pull up her window. Um, so <laughs> so funny thing is, and I told this to you is actually a lot of people that I actually have on my list are actually from the CW. Uh, just because oh, the CW, yeah. they start off on the smaller shows or the ones that don't make it super big, and then they eventually pull up these big career jobs. So. I could see her doing it. She's still young. She's still new. The MCU could save some money on her just because she hasn't. She's she played at the end of Arrow. Oh, okay. You know she and she learned how to do these stunts. Uh, she again is another pretty blonde that can mm-hmm. fit into that role. Uh, okay. She does have the cocky, sometimes sexual attitude. She does very well. I wouldn't say it's technically top notch. But neither was Tom Holland at the beginning either. Right. And um, it'd be like the, a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I could that. see I could see I could see her fitting into that that role. I wouldn't say the greatest off my list, but as far as the MCU version, if she I'd say did her research properly, uh-huh. she could do that. Um, oh, she yeah. does she does drama very well. I mean, okay. her part in the Arrowverse was essentially when she's already grown up and in the future, if I remember right, in in her future, Oliver's dead. Oh, and okay. she's being, I'm trying and to she figure was, out. She was what, raised by, and because yes. it was supposed to be, if I remember right, it's supposed to be, she's supposed to be a daughter of Oliver and Phyllis and, 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 um, and, uh, I want to say, God, it's been so long since I've seen. Uh, oh, I see who she uh, is. Oh, yeah. Smoke. Uh, it's been so long since I watched Arrow. Uh, oh my the, God! Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Felicity. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, I believe that she's already had like the pre-acting chops to fit in that mm-hmm. role very yeah. well. She would be uh, really cute. Oh, she would be adorable. Uh oh. What's up, Jeanette? I uh, actually saw some more Lily Reinhardt from Riverdale as she plays damaged character well and more yes. comic to line build. Yep. Mm-hmm. She's yep. one of the ones that was on my maybe list. She didn't make my top list, but she was on my maybe list. Um, and honestly, yeah. CW, I, you know, so like I was saying, my CW, I got a list that's mostly CW actresses because right. they've already, you know, Riverdale, the Arrowverse, including like Flash, you know, uh, any of the, even some of the more drama stuff like Riverdale and whatever, they have them doing these crazy action scenes, whether it's just running or if anything, they're learning how to bring drama out very well. Right. And yep. mm-hmm. they are, at, they, I think they're better pickups than the young Disney actresses that they eventually grew up to be like MCU stars. Uh, mm-hmm. so, um, I could see I could see an easy CW pick for this. Uh, um, another one actually that I actually think uh, fits into that very uh, I, I don't know necessarily very well, but I could see her fitting in with the age and kind of maybe the attitude necessarily mm-hmm. uh, because we're talking about Arrow is actually Willa Holland. Uh, she actually played as. Uh, um, she played as uh, uh, Oliver's sister. Oh, okay, I remember that one. Yep. Um, she she did. Uh, she also played as uh, a little bit as uh, Speedy. So she was doing oh, as okay, yeah. sidekick. So she did a little bit of action scenes. Who knows how much of that was actually her, or if it was just all a stunt double? I never really researched it, but I could see her 
maybe doing enough research to do it correctly. Because she does she does the teen drama very well. I don't know what she does now, but I could see her fitting into that role very well. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean, if you think about it, shows like, uh, you know, uh, like Arrow, uh, the one I'm also thinking of, of what we're watching right now that we're watching for the 50th time is, is Originals. <laughs> right. A lot of the yep. females in Originals uh, play as like the badass chicks. So, and that oh, that, I didn't even think about that. Oh, Rebecca. Cause, cause oh. Even, right. So, and that's, that's another one I got in there. Not specifically Rebecca, but I have... Um, uh, Riley Vogel, who plays oh, this, actually, yep. um, uh, she she plays as Freya. Yep, yep, that's that a would be a good sister. one. Yeah, because she has attitude. I don't necessarily think that she has the 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 body shape for it. Because that's the one thing I've noticed with the show uh, on there is that out of all the char- out of all the actresses on there, she's the one that has more of a, 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 a more she athletic. athletic. Yeah, but I could see I could, it just like um. First, the perfect person I thought of that had that same look, but then became the ultimate hot girl for all the nerds out there is, um, I can't think of her name, but the actress who played as Rey in Star Wars. Oh, yeah. She has an athletic okay. build, yep. but she worked out for it. She did training, and then she became the the hottest Rey. piece to yep. boys yep. everywhere. Okay, I have another one. Um, okay. So, because um, we're kind of going on the younger road um chloe grace Mo- montez she was the one that was in dark shadows she was in yeah. uh she was in kick ass when she was really little mm-hmm. i feel like she would have the attitude straight on and i feel like with her skin tone and the way she uh works and the way she acts i feel like if they had to bleach her hair to be platinum blonde she would look really good as a platinum blonde so um i i really think she would be she would have the snarkiness down like hardcore she's already played damaged characters before you know she has that training of being you know could kick someone's ass kind of style so i feel like she would be really good for that style and also i feel like she is still in that hollywood younger age to a point that more people would be like oh my god she's in that movie i need to see it kind of thing so sure yeah Yeah. um yeah i mean i i agree the so i mean like this list i think we decided it we got a lot more but i think uh just talking about it we're thinking about all these other people that could fit Mm -hmm. these roles but uh um, so one that you thank you for people doing in the comments yes. too. Uh, thank I, you. And yes, we, we I'm not going to say your names, but we know who you are. We know the <laughs> names. We know who you are. Thank uh, you. But thank you. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for joining the chat. Uh, so next up, and I can't. I I hope you put this on your list. I have a weakness okay. for her as an actress because I thought she did so well. Plus, she's very attractive. Uh, Melissa Benoist. She played a Supergirl. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Um, she wasn't on my list. She was on my maybe list, but I thought maybe because her contract isn't fully done, I don't think. I well, I know that Supergirl is ending, but I don't think I don't know if her contract's fully done. I think she, I think the only reason why I didn't put her on the full jump to you know Marvel was because she's so well known as Supergirl that I feel like. It might not have been like I think but, she would be a great choice, but I could see that's why Marvel would pick her up, though. I could see that by that time she would her contract with DC would be done, and or at least mm-hmm. it would be in completion, and Marvel would be like, "How would you like to try a Marvel movie?" Right. And yeah. then at that point, Marvel's like, "I would like to pull all the Supergirl fans." And had them see a Spider-Man True. movie. True, I could see that. I could see that happening. That makes a good point. Um, I just know, like, the only thing I would be curious about is because uh, would they be able to go back to a DC after that? Because I thought the way that Marvel got well, so, over would be so. I think I think the like, way it works uh, is that you know you can't switch over to Marvel if you're currently on DC contract. So if you yeah. do, if, once you leave the DC contract, she wouldn't be Supergirl anymore. So right, I know yeah. that Supergirl is ending. 
she might still have a contract to do some of the crossover events. Right. Yeah. So those would have to finish for her to do this. And, right. um, and it depends on filming time too, like all that, you know, with, so, but yes, she would be a good choice. Now I, I wouldn't would necessarily really say that she would fit as far as, the, as far as the, uh, combat chops, because obviously she plays as Supergirl, which isn't so much like high octane right. melee action. It's a lot of her have, with high scenes. Right. But I, I feel like she would still have the idea. Um, it would be curious to see her as a baddie, though. I mean, we did see her as, you know, her other self, but um, as Supergirl. But um, it would be interesting to see her play that kind of chops. I just would be curious to see. If she could play like the you know s- seducer kind of chops, but well, then I got a I got a better answer for you because she would actually fit in. She would probably be a little bit older because I know she's let's see, how old is she? She is eighty two. Okay, so she'd be uh, five years older than this. Uh, but maybe if it was the Sony verse, uh, her sister, so oh, uh, yeah. Shiloh mm-hmm. Lay, uh, yeah. Because she's already fitting into the LGBTQ community uh, for that for her role in there, so I could see them kind of pulling it as far as oh, yeah, she would be a good. And she did a lot of more kickassing. She style did more kickass action because she's supposed to be just a regular human, and right. she's supposed to be like the top agent for their division that they're in. Uh, so she does a lot more. Again, I I never really look behind the scenes to see how much of the work she does herself. I'd assume because it's a TV show, she has to do a lot of work herself because, you know, it's it's not like a movie where they can just get a bunch of stunt actors and actresses involved. Um, So, uh, okay. Because you just did two, so I'm going to... Okay, yeah, sorry. (laughs) So, one of mine, um, I just love her as an actress. I feel like um, her just... Her skills of an actress are great and also I think she would fit the mold when it comes to intriguing enough um is i have two of them that fall in that kind of category um the um ex exandria denaro oi i don't know she's the one that oh, was in percy yeah. jackson Jackson's. and baywatch um the new remake, the remake of baywatch, of baywatch. Um, yes. she just has She's such a good actress. She's so um, expressive with her facial structure and her facial. Alexandra uh, Daddario. Yes, Adario. Sorry, I'm horrible at pronouncing names. Um, she's just. I feel like she could fit it, and she's done athletic styles. She's done a lot of athletic movies over the years mm-hmm. too. Her eyes are like piercing, so they would be perfect for that oh, kind of style. Wrong. Plenty of guys are crazy for her. So she's yeah, also had that effective so thing that for her. Would, I feel like it would be really cool if they wanted to go that route of like, if they didn't want to have her contacts uh, and just have her regular eyes, you know, um, yeah, I wouldn't be mad with that, you know, kind of thing. Like, because that's one thing I feel like a lot of people like, that's why when I draw Black Hat and that's just me, it's like I focus on her eyes because yeah, she has the domino mask on. But her eyes are what really pierces through you. So I feel like she would be a good one. Another one, um, and everyone's going to know who I am talking about when I say where she's from. So she's from Split and the Queen's Gambit, um, Anna Taylor-Joy. She just has a unique look that I feel like, and we've already seen her do strategic. We've already seen her do the shattered like backstory style. We've already seen her do a little bit of action, not a lot, but we've seen her a little bit. I mean, in Split, she had to like pretty much escape kind of stuff herself. Um, I feel like she could be a good fit. And plus that she's an upcoming actress and she's unique, like her face, her f- her structure, everything is unique about her. That that would be kind of a cool style, and seeing that, see her jump from doing some of these really good movies as kind of, and then a you know a, a Netflix movie as a main character, but then jumping to like a big cinema stuff. I haven't seen her in a lot of things, and if she has been in a lot of things, I apologize. But those are the two that I know the most of her, and I think it would be really cool. Sure. So, what do you think of those two choices? I like them. Uh, the uh, so we got a lot of younger names on the list. 
Uh-huh. I got one more one if it was a Sony version. Okay. Uh, I just looked at it, and I can't believe I didn't think about this earlier. Uh, Lauren Cohan. Uh, she does oh. uh, She does uh, Maggie from Walking Dead. Oh. Oh, yeah. Huh. I never thought of that. People love her as Maggie. Uh, she does sex good. She does badass well. She does tragic good. She does funny. She does love. She kind of does everything. And that's actually all in mm-hmm. Walking And she's done TV shows before. Uh, she did uh, one season in Chuck. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, she did kind of like the same thing where she started off as a friend and she thought that Chuck the traitor and then she turned into an enemy and so on and so forth. Uh, she's done like the, I'm she's and actually in there. Funny thing was she's been looking for her father for a long time. She found out her father's actually a bad guy. Then she uh, like, so she, she would have, the, it would be an easy role for her. It to would play. be a very easy role for her to fit into. Okay. Has she done any, has she done an action role like this before? I don't think so, but she has done high mobility, like zombie killing kind of thing like that. Oh, so she yeah. Just have to, and she's done martial arts combat, so it would just be mm-hmm. more or less her doing a lot of things. What I'm assuming would be a lot of rope work because she would be, have to be on walls a lot. She would be jumping a lot. But realistically, as far as everything else, she's already got that. Now, right. here's the thing is she had only fit in the Sony first for a couple of yeah. different reasons. One, I believe she's 40. Uh, uh, two is, I would assume she is not cheap. <laughs> yeah. And I would assume that if they're going to bring in a female to Peter, they're going to want to make sure that Tom Holland is getting paid for it. So they're probably gonna, not going to want to add in somebody who's going to make equal amount as money to him right. just because MCU is still on that track. They're still but, wanting to make sure the man gets paid more than the well, woman. Well, in 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 uh, to be uh, to be frank, we already seen it, and this is a great thing for um, actors and actresses that they usually pick ones that are not as well known, and then they develop the they have the chance to develop their skills and develop their falling, and then when they do go to other movies or other shows or anything. Like, they have a fan base that already follows them where they go. So, I could see that, yeah. But in the Sonyverse, I mean, you got... Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yep. I can't think of the, the, the actor that plays as Eddie Brock. Um, yeah, but I know who you're talking about, I, yeah. He's very famous. He makes a lot of money. I'm sure they're paying him a buttload for the I mean, mask. the girl that plays even uh, his... His, well, his, girl his love is, interest... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's yeah, been around she for was, a while. She's been around forever. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, the actor is playing as um, as Morbius. Uh, yeah. Again, I can't take other actors on top of my name, but he gets paid this money. He also does Joker. So it, she would fit yeah, perfectly would. in the notch if she was in the Sony version and did Black Cat. That's um, true. I agree. Many, every time I'm. Uh, uh, when you and I started dating and I was with a different group of friends and we went to C3-2 and she was still the hot commodity in Walking Dead, a bunch of my friends I was with bought so much artwork that she was in mm-hmm. because they are were, they were super uh, Maggie Green fan, girl, fan people. Yeah. So yeah. It, uh, I could see her bringing a fan base that doesn't know anything about Black Cat into a Sony Black Cat movie. Be like, oh yeah. my gosh, in a superhero movie where she's the main heroine. Well, she yes. wasn't, wasn't she in, even in, uh, you know, uh, she was in uh, Vampire Diaries, wasn't she? For a little bit? I think so. Wasn't she the one girl that, like, Damien, like, put into, like, she got bit by the werewolf, wasn't it? Or am I thinking of a different one? Yes, and she Damien's. was. She was. Yeah, she was bit by the werewolf when we yeah. figure. It was so like right when we were introduced to Elijah. Right, so she's done a little bit of action in that too, and oh. done that kind of side of things too. Apparently, she. Okay, so 
Uh, she's uh, she's doing some stuff. Apparently, she does the voice for a character in the new Catwoman animated movie. Oh, okay. So she might she be on contract this, for D- DC. Oh, uh, it's only one movie. She does. Oh, okay. uh, she plays as Julia. She does the voice for Julia Pennyworth. So, oh, okay. Meaning that she'd be completely available to do. Uh, oh, and she also. Oh, okay. So she also does the voice for a, a character in Invincible. Okay. So yeah. she's done voices for he- for heroines, um, uh, cool. but yeah, she's the, she's one of the main characters in Walking Dead. Um, apparently she's yeah, because she's also done like, stuff like Robot Chicken and stuff like that. So she's not uh she's she's not a stranger to doing heroin and animated things. So mm-hmm. her jump in there. Oh, and I forgot she played as Martha Wayne in Batman vs Superman. Mm-hmm. Played as Batman's mom. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, so she's not a stranger. She just seems to. That's the only thing is, it seems like she's a uh, DC DC preferred. person. Yeah. yeah so preferred. it would depend on if she was on contract with DC. Whether that just means that DC just likes her, or she just likes DC. One of the two. Right. But you know, <laughs> uh, true. You know, it, it. We've seen again. We bring it back up to people can switch back and forth. I mean, right. How many how many actors and actresses have we seen start on one side mm-hmm. and or the other side? Some of them even come back. You know, it's uh, it, it, there's a lot of flip flops back and forth, and a lot of times, actually, Marvel and DC like to steal actors and actresses from each other <laughs> just because they're, they're already getting a fan base for that. Right. I did so, have one other person on my yeah. list. Um, she's also from Riverdale. She plays Veronica. So oh, sure. Kamala, uh, Michaela, uh, um, I don't know how to say it. McCar- That's um, right. But she, I think she would play a good one if they wanted to go kind of um, that cushy, sultry kind of way. I sure. think she would be good for that. Um, and she is a younger actress, and she's also got that younger crowd. So I think, and this, and for height wise, I think she would be a good um, height wise with um, with Spider Man, and I think it would be good. But um, I besides that, I mean, I would like to see if she's done more action things. I don't know; she's still pretty young and pretty new to. From again, what I can tell, but yeah, so. I feel like it might be a cool, cool and thing. I mean, but. honestly, between her and uh, what's her name, Lily Reinhardt, who plays the redhead in there, uh, uh, mm, mm, it's uh, uh, Madeline. Madeline. Uh, the both of them plays a character who have a rich mom, so mm-hmm. that would actually fit into a Felicia story if they wanted to follow her living with her mom and her mom still being like a. A rich kind of style, kind of thrown, kind of thing like that. They would already know that kind of thing. But on the same end, and I know I was talking to this before, and you didn't really feel it. I still think that the girl who plays Betty in in that (laughs) once again, um, she she fits into the. And this is only I know because I've, I've watched some behind the scenes stuff of them. She fits into a lot of the more. Uh, even though it's not her character in the show, she fits into a lot more, I guess in other things she does, a lot more broken characters. Yeah. Apparently she does broken very well. Yeah, so that I, was that's Lily. That okay. was the one that was in the okay, that's comments. Right okay. yeah. yeah. So I could see yeah. I could see her I could see her working as a more tragic story for Black Cat. And it being a story where Peter's broken, but well. Spider-Man's broken, Black Cat's broken. They find solace in each other, but it's really not a relationship. It's more or less just a, a friends with benefits system. Yeah, she, like, she, 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 right yeah, I know we mentioned it before because of the comments in the yeah. and the and, and yeah, so she was on my maybe list. So she was on my maybe. Um before uh we continue, is there anything else you got on your list that you want to bring up? <laughs> I think that's it. I had a few others, but I'm, now that we've had some conversations, I think um, 
the ones that I stated or the ones that I would stick with more. Obviously, there's probably plenty of other people have other p- opinions and other, and there's probably plenty of different actresses out there that would be, like we stated before, that could be a great fit. We just might not know of them. These are the ones we're thinking of at this time. <laughs> um, to reiterate, we're not saying that we know anything that Black Hat will appear in any of these movies. No, we're just there speculating. Rumors, there's, there's Easter eggs, there's things that we would assume that if they follow a kind of path or a, or a Hollywood path, this would make sense. We're literally just bringing you on our conversations that we have like on a monthly basis as, as nerds of and Spider-Man and Black Hat. Often, so we're going to try to do more podcasts every Tuesday hosted by myself, whether Amber's going to be involved or any other of the group of the Nerdy Playbook are going to be present. Uh, we will try to, because we do this all the time, and it's best that we're not at which we have a tape recorder and we just record ourselves doing it. Right. Like, uh, we had, like uh, just to tell you guys how much we, uh, this is like a common phenomenon in our group of friends or even in our in this house, um, we've had conversations that, you know, what if there was a cross between Marvel Universe and magic? What characters would be what, uh, co- uh, like, what, uh, like, uh, actual cards and what, and this and this. We literally sat on the floor for like three hours talking about that back and forth. So, yeah, so these kind of conversations, we have a lot and we enjoy having them. And if anyone else, any of anyone in our friends group or so on who's watching um, wants to be involved and wants to, has an idea, you can always reach out to us and put on ideas or even just want to, if you guys want to join, feel free. Like we're, yep. <laughs> if you have, a, if you have a, uh, a nerd topic that you want us to talk about that feels like it can kill an hour of time and you want to either have us talk about More it than or, an hour. <laughs> you, or if you want to join in, uh, into a conversation, send us a message. Um, to respond to a message that was just sent by Genetic, uh, yeah, we mentioned it earlier uh, that uh, they they showed they showed off Black Cat in a uh, what I think is a Daily Bagel Daily Bugle uh, newspaper uh, in the second trailer of Morbius. Um, we mentioned this earlier uh, that it I think it's believed it said Black Cat strikes again. Um, that's why we were. That's why we were talking about uh, whether or not she could fit in the Sony or the Marvel. We prefer in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but again, that also doesn't. It doesn't imply in the newspaper if it's actually uh, Felicia or when they say Black Cat. Her, her dad as the original Black Cat, mm-hmm. and then it maybe goes off a tangent. Uh, that's that's kind of uh, where this was going. We were trying to figure out. You know, it, it's kind of went up to one of those things of, you know, there, there's as far as how it's always been with these with who gets what characters between uh, Sony and Disney and originally before Disney bought Fox, Fox was whoever was writing a script at the time. Right. So, mm-hmm. You know, no one could ever get the rights on Spider-Man because Sony was constantly writing a script. Honestly, if I remember right, the only reason why Disney got a piece of Spider-Man was I remember that Sony was hacked way back mm. when, and they were about to lose money. And Disney Disney decided to try to jack Spider Man, and the courts were allowing them to have a percent. So, um, the uh, honestly, if, if Sony weren't such white knuckle grabbers, uh, Disney would actually have full control over Spider Man. But, well, um, and we all know like what uh, the history. We could go into the history of that, but um, yes, and so that's why previously we were talking about the fact that there would be a Sony verse or a Marvel uh, MC verse, pretty much, um, because there's so. And we did mention before, but there could be so di- many different things we could. Um, fall into or they could do depending on in uh, in each one so right. so uh again in closing uh if you guys mm-hmm. want to we're gonna try to do these on tuesdays uh mm-hmm. we'll try a new nerd topic every time send us a message if you want to if you have a offer of a certain kind of nerd topic or if you want to be present um 
Uh, if we are not familiar with you personally, we'll just have to ask you a couple of questions just to make sure it's a good fit. Uh, don't forget to check us out on, unfortunately, we do not have a select date on weekdays, but always one day per week minus this one due to holidays. We'll be playing our D&D session. Yep. Campaign two. And uh, other days you will find me and maybe some of the other group playing any games from Halo to Dead by Daylight. But mm -hmm. this is uh, Radem from Annie and Kohaku, and we are signing off. Bye. And we love you all. Thanks for watching.